Hey, Jeremy from Lucky Hat Outdoors, and this afternoon I'm going to walk you through one of my favorite speckled trout recipes. It's a tempura battered fish taco with a homemade pineapple salsa. So, over the course of the day, I've already prepared several things to include the, the fish marinade. This recipe requires the, the fish to marinate for about an hour in the refrigerator. So I kind of tend to, when I have the chance, prepare it earlier, stick it in the fridge, and then just go about my business. Now for the marinade, you'll need a half cup of lime juice, a cup and a half of water, a tablespoon of sea salt, two teaspoons of Mexican oregano, two serrano peppers seeded and finely diced, and 10 cloves of garlic finely diced. And you'll pile everything together, and I mixed in, today I had 12 speckled trout fillets that I threw in there, and we've been letting them sit for quite a while. Now the next step is the salsa. And what I use for that, and, and this is one that I kind of came up with myself, is I use a quart of fresh pineapple from the grocery store, a whole red onion, and whatever leftover serranos I have, and some cilantro. And the serrano, onion, and pineapple I'll throw on the grill for a period of time just to get them a good char and kind of get a little bit of grilled flavor going. And then here in a second, I'm just going to dice them up real fine. I'm going to toss in the, uh, the cilantro, and we'll just mix it all together, and we'll use this as a topping for our fish tacos. You know, I always say I'm going to use the food processor next time I do this, and I'm always lying. There's just something almost cathartic about chopping all this stuff up, although it does take a lot of time. So the uh, original recipe for the fish tacos called for serranos, and I really like the flavor, and since I had to buy serranos anyway, I went ahead and got them for the salsa, and I am super happy with just the taste and the flavor and the amount of heat that you get out of a couple of serranos in this recipe. And cilantro is by far one of my favorite ingredients. I mean, just raw cilantro smells good, it tastes good. Cilantro and pineapple are two of my favorite things, period. I wish I could get a fresh cilantro air freshener for my truck. And that, makes up the salsa and we'll just go ahead and set that aside till it's time to serve. So the original recipe for this calls for three quarters cups of ice water, two table, two and a half tablespoons of yellow mustard and one cup of plain white flour. Um, I find it to be a little mild so just for my own personal kick to it I just add a little bit of uh, Cajun seasoning. And you mix the water and the mustard to start. And then you whisk in the flour kind of slowly, which is, can be challenging to do. And you're trying to work while you're whisking, you're trying to work the lumps out of it. And if you get down to it where it's really desperately bad, you can uh, add a little more water if you need to, which I'm probably going to need to for this batch. In fact, I am definitely going to need to. And the idea here is, is we are making a sticky kind of battery. It's a tempura batter. So it's going to be a, a little stickier than your normal fish batter. We're going to go ahead and put that in the fridge for about 15 to 20 minutes. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and take our trout fillets out of the marinade. And cut them into smaller strips. All right, so our trout fillets have been marinating in the lemon juice, peppers, garlic, and uh, 
serranos. And now we need to cut them into strips. Now try to get the bigger chunks of pepper and garlic off. But if there's a little bit left, I don't tend to worry about it. I just throw it in the batter and let it go. It all comes out in the end. And really, there's no technique to it. I'm just going to cut these things into smaller strips so they'll fit into a tortilla better. And we'll just go ahead and set them aside. I'm running a little bit behind, so for expediency's sake, I'm going to go ahead and start the tortillas while I let the uh, while I let the batter cool. So I got this little griddle pan, cast iron that. Lord knows where it came from. But it has been absolutely amazing for tortillas. And one of the sad parts about Louisiana, one of the few downsides to Louisiana is the tortillas are nowhere near as good as they are in Texas. So I can't make a great tortilla recommendation. But for this recipe, I do use flour. And we're just going to let the griddle heat up, and once it's done, we're going to heat these tortillas, and then I'll stick them in the oven while I finish everything up. So once all the tortillas are browned, we're just going to go ahead and toss them in the oven at a low setting just to keep them warm. And I'm going to move the griddle off the flame. And we're going to go ahead and throw on the oil. And today I'm using peanut oil that's left over from our last fish fry, and I can't tell you how much of it I have. But uh, one of the key lessons we've learned with fish frying in any type, and especially with this tempura batter, is temperature is essential. And you want it in the 360 to 380 range. And you need to be careful to check temper temperature periodically between batches, because when you toss in a handful of fish, it'll cool off the oil and if you just don't let it heat up before you throw in the next batch eventually it'll just cool and cool and cool and your fried fish will continue to get greasier and greasier as it goes on and with this recipe with the tempura batter if you start getting greasy it, it starts getting slimy and nasty so if really crispy is the way to go so I usually heat my oil up to about 370 ish in a check it I have a candy thermometer which has been just an awesome tool to have around the house when we're as much fish as we're frying. And while that's heating up we're going to go ahead and take out our cooled tempura batter and we're just going to start dredging a few pieces of fish in it and this stuff as you can tell is thick it can be a little challenging to work with because it thickens up on your fingers so quick But we're going to just dredge a few pieces of this fish through there. So as soon as the oil's ready, we'll have a batch ready to go. All right. While we're waiting for that to heat up, we've got our paper towel covered plate. Got my little strainer. I'm going to check the oil here in a minute. And once it hits that magic 370 mark, we're going to throw in a batch to, uh, to fry. Once we hit that magic 370 mark, always seems to take forever. These fish chunks are going to cook really quick, about two minutes, two and a half minutes a piece. Things can get a touch hectic when you're trying to do multiple batches. I always try to remind myself to package these fish smaller when I clean them and I always fail. The downside to that is when I, when I have to break fish out to cook some, I end up having to cook a lot. The upside is, is my lunch for the next two days is probably going to be deep fried speckled trout, which is always a good thing. And there we go. We got good thick batter.
for about two, two and a half minutes at this temperature. And one of the best rules of thumb is when a fried food starts floating, you can be pretty sure it's ready to come out. So the first cool thing about this recipe is it's tacos, so it's simple. You put the fish on the tortilla, you put the salsa on the fish, there you go buddy, salsa which my knucklehead toddler loves. And the other really good part about it is this recipe keeps fairly well and it's just as good later in the week for lunch. John from Lucky Hat Outdoors. If you like what you see, check us out on Facebook and Instagram, and check out our videos on YouTube. See more of these glorious fish. Oh, this dude catches one, and now they're glorious fish. Glorious.